Hey there YouTube, uh, I'm currently still on my Beast Wars kick and I probably will be for a little while actually, especially after auto assembly because I have an agenda now, if you'll pardon the pun, uh, yeah, uh, anyone who knows the Beast Wars show will hopefully get that. I do have an agenda now, I've got an itinerary of things that I want, I want to complete my, uh, my Predacon collection over there. And to do that, what I need to get are some of the, sadly, some of the more expensive figures. I need to get the, um, the exclusives like Antagony and Shocker Act and uh, Cryotech, etc., etc. And if I can't get them at auto assembly, I'm going to get them over eBay. So, what I thought I'd do today, since I haven't done a Transformers re review for a while, actually, I'm going to do another Beast Wars one. But I'm going to do one of the earlier Beast Wars this time, since I've been doing Transmetals a lot recently. I, I don't really like a lot of the earlier Beast Wars toys. They, the line is highly experimental in general. And I think with the early Beast Wars toys, they re the designers really were trying to find their feet and develop a, a particular aesthetic and style for the Beast Wars toys. Uh, but this one is a fine example. An, it is an example of one of the very best from that period. This handsome fellow is Transkeeto. Yeah, I know, he's got a shit name. A lot of the Beast Wars toys do, unfortunately, but he is a stunning piece of work. And if you couldn't tell from his name, he's a very, 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 very large mosquito. And in terms of character, this guy's a bit of an asshole, actually, as all Predacons generally are. Apparently this one is one of the biggest assholes of all Predacons. Even the other Predacons hate him, because he goes out of his way to be irritating to them. His function is a tracker, and apparently he's very good at it. That's the only reason they keep him around. But he takes incredible pleasure when everyone around him is on edge or slightly nervous for some bizarre reason. Knowing how neurotic the Predacons generally seem to be, it's probably owing to some deep-seated insecurity of his own or something to that effect. Anyway, he didn't feature in the cartoon, unfortunately, but he does have a bit of exposure in the fabulous IDW Beast Wars comics. And I recently bought this, actually. This is the uh, omnibus that has all of the comics IDW have done. And also the uh, Beast Wars source book that has bios for each of the characters and also general details on the universe in which Beast Wars operates and it's brilliant, it's absolutely, it's a brilliant read, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. But yes, he appears as part of uh, Magmatron's band of rogue Predacons who go to prehistoric Earth whilst the Beast Wars are occurring in order to a. Fulfill their mission for the Tripredicus Council, which is to bring Megatron back for trial, but also to fulfill Magmatron's own agenda, which is to activate all of the stasis pods that are lying strewn around prehistoric Earth and reprogram them into a Predacon army. And he only half succeeds in that, unfortunately, thanks to the efforts of the Maximal Razor Beast who uh, is actually undercover as part of Magmatron's band and sabotages his efforts so that some of the stasis pods activate as Maximals. And an entire new Beast Wars erupts, one that occurs concurrently with the one that's, that occurs in the show. It's very, very good. I would heartily recommend it. And Transkito is one of his original crew. And he seems to be one of the very few who actually survives as well. He does survive uh, into the second storyline where they go back to Cybertron and fight Shocker Act and so on and so forth. But we don't see much of him after that. In terms of the toy, the toy is just gorgeous in this mode. It does have a little bit of kibble that you can definitely see the robot hands there. That's a shame. But it really doesn't matter that much. I can definitely, definitely forgive that considering the sheer amount of detail that's on this guy and how convincing he is as a very 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 large mosquito. He's also got a beautiful colour scheme, this sort of tan colour with the pur the very very muted purple and gorgeous paint, uh, paint details on his abdomen there as well. Definitely definitely forgive any problems that he has, he's beautiful and he's very well articulated as well, his legs are on ball joints so they will go anywhere you want. And these rather interesting implements here as well. 
are also on ball joints. They'll move anywhere, but they're very, very, very brittle and fragile. Well, those things actually are. Those are anatomically correct. Mosquitoes do have these things. I can't quite remember what they're called. But when a mosquito bites, when it uh, injects with its proboscis, it uses these to tease the wound apart and hold it apart so that it actually bleeds. And it does have a little gimmick in this mode. It's sort of the standard gimmick for insect predacons, or predacons with wings, which is... Little button there, his wings will flap, which is very nice indeed. It's unobtrusive, doesn't get in the way of the toy, so yeah, that's not too bad at all. He is supposed to have a third mode, uh, but like all Beast Wars third modes, it's tacked on meaningless crap. I am not going to transform it into that mode, because it's a waste of time. Instead, I will get him into robot mode for your perusal. And there we have Transkito in his robot mode. Now one of the things you'll notice about this robot mode is that it looks very, very organic. It, in fact, it's very difficult to find any mechanical details on it at all. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It, the overall aesthetic is actually very, very good. He's also very bestial looking. I mean, his robot face actually lo looks more like some sort of alien than a Cybertronian robot. I like that as well. It seems to be based on the Predator. He's got the um, sort of multiple jaw that the Predator has, which is rather nice. And he's monstrously detailed. His head has tons and tons of sculpted detail on it, as does every inch of his body. Yes, there are sort of... I, they are sort of problems with Kibble. I mean, these uh, these insect legs hanging off of his arms. Then, uh, you know, I don't mind them that much. I don't think they actually serve as Kibble, because they actually look pretty damn good. It just makes him look like what he is, which is a hideous mutant monstrosity. I rather like that. This is one of those instances where they've gone for that very particular Beast Wars aesthetic, which is kibble-laden, and it's worked. It's worked quite nicely. He has nicely sculpted hands that are open. He doesn't have any weapons apart from the missile in his head, which can launch. He fires it out of his mouth. And like almost all of the Beast Wars toys, his articulation is excellent. His articulation just is everywhere. There is no way he, his legs or his arms will not move and his head is articulated as well. His wings maintain their flapping mechanism in this mode, which is very, very nice. And he's a he's a nice, decent-sized figure as well. He's, he's, he's one of the... Uh, I suppose he's a Voyager-class... In modern vernacular, there weren't Voyager classes back then, but he's the same size as the likes of Scorponok and Inferno. And I would highly recommend him. He is an excellent, excellent figure. One of my favourites from the early Beast Wars line. 